That is a Chinese broadsword, more commonly known as a Tao. This is um, very popular right now when people watch Chinese Kung Fu movie. That is a primary weapon that a lot of characters use. And with that little trivia, we come to Wisdom Wednesday, week number seven of the coronavirus, social distancing, staying at home, saving the world while not doing hardly anything at all. <laughs> and I am Johnny Tiger. Uh, the date is April 29, 2020. Now, why am I showing the sword? Uh, what does the sword have to do with wisdom other than uh, to showcase that the pen is mightier than the sword? Well, the sword helped me illustrate today's topic, which is that I'm going to take you down a winding history of the origin of Chinese people. And maybe, just maybe, that Chinese people are not what we commonly think of them as. Confused yet? <laughs> Probably. But hopefully it will all make sense by the end of the video. You see, a sword like this only became popular and symbolic of Chinese weaponry in the last two imperial dynasty of Chinese history. Which is to say that for a majority of Chinese history, for about 4,000 odd years, Chinese sword did not look like this. Now Chinese sword, of course, like many swords anywhere in the world, uh, if they were made for commoners, soldiers, uh, newly conscripted people, they were very, very cheap. Cheaply made, uh, probably inferior iron, uh, melted down from farming tools, and then reforged into swords that could barely be held together. Throughout Chinese history, some of the best swords were made with a material that called bin tie, roughly translated as cold steel. I'm not talking about the knife brand, cold steel, although if you look into uh, the, where they get the brand name from, it might correlate with the Chinese people's fascination with cold steel. Um, actually, if we want to be even more specific, bin tie actually meant cold iron. But bin tie wasn't actually a kind of iron. The way it was forged and purified made it more into steel category. Many, many specialists today argue over just exactly what grade of steel the cold iron was. As close as we can determine, it was about the equivalent of today's 1095 high carbon steel. Very, very good in the old day, in another word, when we talk about uh, about a thousand years, uh, two thousand years ago. Now, the interesting thing was, bin tie, cold iron, wasn't produced in China. China never had this type of iron or this type of material. Uh, this material was primarily mined and forged and produced in Persia. And then the Persian people would sell it to other tribes and other little nations uh, to the north and west of China back then. So way back then, 
when this type of material start trickling into the actual China、uh, nation, the Chinese nation, it was brought over by a northwestern barbaric tribe. This tribe name was Qi Dan. Qi Dan, in their language, funny enough, translated as the tribe of the cold iron. So that's how、uh, great this steel was. This、uh, this grade of steel was back then. That a, a whole barbaric nation named themselves. After this material, the cold iron started appear in China in the Tang Dynasty around one thousand and nine hundred years ago, and it is because of that. If you look. Through Chinese history, the best weapons, the best swords, were Tang swords. Swords were、uh, fashioned、uh, in during the Tang Dynasty. It was said that the Tang swords were so hard to forge; it took so much mastery that it took three years to forge one blade. And it did not look like this. The Tang sword had a narrow, straight blade with a thick back. It wasn't broad and、uh, thin like the modern depiction of Chinese sword. There is, to this day, right now, only one real, authentic Tang sword. Left in the world that's passed down through history, only one, and that sword is held by the Emperor of Japan. It has been passed down from one emperor to the next for many many generations, and that design of the Tang sword was also what inspired. The making of the samurai katana and wakashashi and other samurai swords. So when people say that Japanese people had this art of folding、uh, the steel uh, the, so many times to make the、uh, sword super strong, and、uh, they created this deadly weapon、uh, and so on and so on, they didn't. Chinese people. Came up with the technology in Tang Dynasty, and then the Tang sword went、uh, to Japan and became the treasure of the emperor. And ever since then, Japanese people been copying off that one original Tang sword. This also bring us to the topic today. To most of the Western world, that huge nation is called China, and we are called the Chinese people. Where does the name China come from? Well, it's because of the last dynasty in China history, in Chinese history. It's called Qin Chao, Qin. C H I N. Now I know a lot of people like to write it as Qing Dynasty, but the original pronunciation was Qin Chao, the last dynasty in Chinese history. Just coincidentally, or maybe not so much, the dynasty where foreign powers such as British people and American people and French people. German people invaded China, ripped Chinese people apart from inside out.、Uh, the Opium War and all that stuff, all that bad stuff, went down. 
So it's kind of ironic that the Western world call this nation by the name of the dynasty that it was at its weakest point. So we can say that if、uh, the Western world discovered China, or if they encountered China in an earlier day when China was actually strong, it's quite possible that Chinese people today would be Tangnese people or Songnese people would be named after much greater dynasty in Chinese history. And this also gave claim to what the Japanese people were saying when they invaded China during the Second World War. A lot of you might not have read this, but when Japanese people invaded China、uh, in 1939,、uh, or was it now 1930? Eight or something somewhere around that.、Uh, my history is a little bit rusty as far as time frames concerned, but back then their invasion had an air of、uh, legality to it because Japanese people claimed that they were the true Chinese people, that the Chinese people today were nothing but a mixed blood of the. People who rule the Qing Dynasty, which just happened, they were not real Chinese people. So, though the Qing Dynasty was built by a northern invading tribe, an invading、uh, barbaric nation that took over China when China was really, really weak. Japanese people claimed that them as a, a Japanese people. Hold the only remaining Tang sword in the world, and that proves that they were the descendants of the true Chinese people from the Tang Dynasty. That they have the true blood of the Chinese people, and they should rule China and make China great again. Now, whether all that was BS or not, there's really no way to know, but. It's a bit of interesting history. Now, if you say, "Is this true or no?"、Uh, are you just making this thing up? Well, I would、uh, suggest you take a look at what other nations call China. To the Western world, that nation is called China, known by its weakest dynasty in Chinese history. But to Russia and other countries closer to China. It's still called by the name Kitai. Those a lot of you might know that Chinese airline called Cathay Pacific. The name Cathay is derived from Kitai, and Kitai is derived from the original name of the Cold Steel Tribe, Qi Dan, Kitai, the people that were forged out of. The best steel in the world at the time that they lived. So that is it for today. Um,、uh, before I go, I will give you a couple of vocabularies.、Uh, China in Mandarin is called Zhongguo, J O N G G W O, Zhongguo. Chinese people. 中国人 ，so you add people, R E N, at the end. Thank you for checking out today's Wisdom Wednesday. Stay safe, stay strong, and I will see you guys again tomorrow.